Hello, welcome to History Quest, where we take fascinating journeys into the past. Today, we'll be exploring the history of the Hindenburg. On May the 6th, 1937, a shocked crowd of thousands watched as the majestic German Zeppelin Hindenburg exploded above Lakehurst, New Jersey. The tail of the massive airship loosed to the ground while its nose, hundreds of feet long, reared. The gigantic luxury vessel incinerated into ashes within a minute. Many passengers and crew members managed to jump from great heights to safety, while others were trapped on board. Of its 97 occupants, 62 miraculously survived. A German military officer, Camp Ferdinand von Zeppelin, was inspired by hot air balloons he had observed in the United States during the Civil War to develop the first rigid frame airships in the late 1800s. His Hindenburg was the largest commercial airship ever produced and the most technologically advanced in scale, more than three times the size of a Boeing 747 and with a maximum speed of 135 kilometres or 84 miles per hour. The opulent airship featured 72 passenger beds and heated cabins, fitted out with lightweight aluminium furniture. The outlay included a silk wallpaper dining room, lounge, writing room, bar, smoking room and promenades with windows which could be opened in flight. The Hindenburg had already flown 63 times, mainly from Germany to North and South America. After a smooth trip from Frankfurt, the Hindenburg encountered thunderstorms in New Jersey and Captain Max Pruss decided to delay the landing. He flew the airship around the beaches, finally approaching Lakehurst just after 7pm. The massive craft performed a sharp S-turn to counter wind gusts prior to descending. Then landing lines were dropped the handlers on the ground, who then spotted what the lady described as wave-like fluttering beneath the ship's fabric covering. What was probably escaping hydrogen quickly burst into flames, which covered the entire tail of the ship within seconds. As the blazing tail sank to the ground, the nose reared up into the sky for a few seconds before crashing down, engulfed in flames. The fabric covering was incinerated, leaving the metal skeleton stand for only seconds before it buckled and collapsed. The appalled onlookers rushed to help passengers who had jumped to safety, while the fiery inferno took only 34 seconds to completely consume the airship. The speed of destruction meant that survival mainly depended on the location of passengers and crew when the fire started. Most of the passengers had gathered at the windows to watch the landing, and many of these were able to jump to safety while most passengers in their cabins perished. More crew members than passengers lost their lives because they were scattered throughout the ship. The shocking blast would probably be caused by a leak in the fuel cells, whereby hydrogen escaped and mixed with oxygen, creating a highly flammable combination which easily ignited. It is still unknown why the hydrogen was leaking and how it was ignited, given that all the evidence was incinerated. Aviation historian Don Grossman also attributes some of the blame to Nazi pride. Construction of the Hindenburg was already underway when the Nazis assumed power in Germany in 1933. The Third Reich viewed the Zeppelin as symbolising German strength and the Hindenburg was partly owned by the government and partly the property of its manufacturer, the Zeppelin Company. Giant swastikas adorned its tail fins. Previously, Chancellor Joseph Goebbels, the German Minister of Propaganda, had ordered the Hindenburg to embark on a propaganda mission before its endurance test had ever been concluded. For four days, it had flown around Germany, broadcasting patriotic songs and dropping pro-Hitler leaflets. However, the weather had been bad during the flight and its tail had been damaged. Captain Pruss was a Nazi party member and tended to bow to Nazi pressure having damaged the Hindenburg on the propaganda flight because of following unsafe Nazi orders on the still untested mechanisms. During its final flight, he was still under pressure from the Nazi party to comply with a strict time schedule. Although the Hindenburg was only half occupied on its flight from Frankfurt to Lakehurst, it was completely booked with celebrities, officials and other notable personages for the return journey. They were returning post-haste to Europe 
to attend the coronation of Britain's King George VI. Already arriving late at Lakehurst, the airship needed to effect a fast turnaround for the flight back. Arriving late for the coronation would have reflected poorly on the German government, and the Nazi party was very sensitive to public opinion. Poor weather was not quite as frightening as the wrath of the Gestapo. According to Grossman, Pruss should have waited for the electricity in the air to dissipate before landing. The Hindenburg crash ended the airship era with American and German companies cancelling their plans to develop the technology, which was quickly superseded anyway by a faster, cheaper aircraft. Thanks for watching History Quest. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit the like button and subscribe? Until next time, bye.